Digital Yacht Napatafa is a radically different approach to engaging William Faulkner and his work on the internet. There have been other projects. John Paget's William Faulkner on the Web, the Hypertext Sound on the Fury, and any number of other sites that at one time or another presented Faulkner's works. They were and are innovative, finding ways to exploit links to archives, videos, sound clips, and other materials to offer guides to Faulkner's work. Digital Yacht and Patafa follow suit by offering a guide to Faulkner's places. The user can choose works to explore and then select locations, characters, topography, and most importantly, events to gain a concrete sense of the places, people, and movements of Faulkner's fiction. But there is more at work in this website and the potentials it unlocks and points to. I want to talk about my experiences helping to develop this site and to ponder how it particularly opens the way for something that moves beyond digital humanities scholarship of the guideline variety to actual critical approaches opened up by the kinds of spatiality peculiar to digital web-based platforms. I first learned about Digital Yacht of at the 2012 uh, MLA convention in Seattle. There it was. Uh, unveiled in its inchoate form as part of a digital Faulkner panel. It was very impressive. I did, however, have a few concerns. Now, one thing that bothered me was that this website really does offer only a Yacht and of Faulkner. The other problem really was related to a question that Peter Lurie raised, which is how much of a danger was there that this website could maybe usurp, or really, as Lurie put it, uh, really to threaten to replace the reading experience? Um, Lurie has written, of course, extensively on vision and Faulkner, and he made the point that the experience of interacting with a bound set of leaves, uh, looking at where the words are on the page, all of these things create different kinds of experiences in the reader's brain. Uh, it's an experience with the topography of a book, which is very different from, say, watching a film, or in this case, dealing with a website, a screen. Uh, these kinds of things don't really seem to uh, fire in the brain the same ways. They don't allow for the same kinds of experiences. Uh, where Lurie was concerned that the actual Faulkner text might get lost altogether, my concern was that a potential reader looking to this website before reading the text itself, or the texts themselves, would have a mental map so shaped as really not to be able to participate in the discoveries, surprises, and experiences of Faulkner's, of reading Faulkner's writing. Even though I had these concerns, when I watched Stephen Railton demonstrate the dynamic capabilities of the site, I was riveted. His idea of creating hotspots to register events on the map of a given work struck me as the kind of innovation that really took advantage of the always developing capabilities of the Internet. This project represented something beyond hyperlinks to materials. Those links are very important and distinctly Faulknerian in their shifts in space, but this dynamic pointed to something more in the business of digital humanities. I also liked the flexibility that I saw in the project. It might be a Yacht project, but Railton explained that the effort was not to imagine some grand static map, but rather to conceive of the mappings present in Faulkner's individual works. Railton even proposed a function that would allow mappings of various works to be superimposed on one another to show how Faulkner's mapping ideas developed and changed over time. There would also be possibilities for adding in non yacht spaces. By the end of the session, I was ready to sign up. Which I did. And soon, Stephen warmly welcomed me into the group of editors he was assembling uh, to do this project. Now, Stephen and John Padgett had already done a bit of work on uh, Flags in the Dust. And they, that was really what they were able to show us at the MLA convention. But they recommended that we start, we the new co-editors, start really with short stories. It would be easier to manage, uh, not maybe quite so complex. So we came up with a list of those stories, and 
and when we figured out what they would be, then we paired up, and two co-editors were assigned really to uh, deal with each story. Steve Nipper and I were assigned barn burning. Things got very interesting very quickly. Uh, I reread Barn Burning, paying closer attention than ever to whatever details I could find about where things maybe are happening in the story and, and what's going on. Issues of place and space have been important and interesting to me for a very long time. And so I wanted to try to think about, okay, where are things happening? Uh, what I realized very quickly uh, is that uh, no matter how specific Faulkner could be in his mapping, for example, when he wrote his own maps or drew his own maps, the reality of these spaces and places in literature and fiction are very fluid, uh, frustratingly fluid, in fact, at times. And uh, they, these spaces often will, will reorganize themselves based on experience and perspective of characters and narrators. This happens a lot with Faulkner. Uh, and even a, a short story of this kind of thing happens in very subtle ways. So in trying to think about how to place bodies, buildings, and events on a map in barn burning, uh, there were huge issues very quickly. And Steve and I, Steve Nepper and I, began to write back and forth how where should this particular event be held? Where should Sardi's ditch be? Or where should he be on this hill or something? You know, all these kinds of things about where uh, things happen, that became very hard to pin down by XY coordinates. What was going on is that we had not only to think about how the story maps space or how the author was trying to map space, and place, but also how we as readers do that. Uh, how do we map and how do we imagine uh, kind of where things are placed uh, within the, the landscape or topography of the, uh, of the story. And I think that a, a website such as this one is really able to, to bring this kind of thing uh, to to the scho to scholarly attention, um, and that really, really digital scholarship is um, really kind of important because of the ways that it deals with a question like that or an issue like that. Now, let me say there are models for thinking about how the reading experience uh, works through space. Uh, Gaston Bachelard's uh, thinking about poetic space is important here. Uh, Yifu Tuan, not necessarily dealing with literary situations, but definitely thinking about uh, how space and place are experiential things. I think his way of thinking also is, is relevant here. For Tuan, uh, spacing and placing are always things that are human-centered. Uh, the table is never under the book. A book is on the table because we pick up and read a book. That's It's directly related to the way that humans use things. What I quickly found is that whereas discussing space and place in the abstract, in the way that I'm kind of doing at the moment, is that uh, whether that's for the author or character or reader or whatever, uh, that's it's in some ways can get complicated, it can be head spinning, but at least it's a familiar uh, kind of um, discourse. Uh, but a digital platform such as Digital Yacht and Patalpa demands something more concrete in the way of thinking through placing and spacing. Uh, dealing with this concreteness led me to wonder ultimately if Faulkner's own thinking was maybe more precise and concrete than I generally think of it as being. Could it be that um, the cartography, that somehow this business of cartography and his postage stamp of native soil was something uh, that was maybe less abstract uh, than I was thinking. It's impossible for us to know. Although my inclination is still to think that Faulkner did not necessarily always have a specific map in mind. Still we're left with the problem though of how do we draw this map? How do we plot things on XY coordinates for readers? And again, does one rob the reader of the experience of developing his or her own poetically spaced map by providing uh, this kind of mapping uh, for that reader? Answering this question brings us to the heart of digital humanities, digital scholarship, and its problems and its potentials. 
Now we can think about how many good websites are already out there. Again, William Faulkner on the web. So it's almost as if it's a digital version of the University Press of Mississippi's Reading Faulkner series and that it provides all these resources and all this guidance for readers. Again, there is the problem of prescription sometimes. Maybe a reader approaches the text too much through the lens of those guides, but pretty much they're pretty useful. Hypertext, Sound and the Fury does things, uh, does a lot more. It actually wants to unbend, for example, Benji's narrative to show the, the chronology uh, historically of what happens in that section. And that can be problematic because it could get in the way of the reader experience. Digitally Art Patafa, though, goes far beyond where these other websites go uh, into this realm of perhaps even creating where Faulkner himself is not creating. Thinking about spatiality in ways that Faulkner himself is not doing. This matter can be turned around, however, if we think of Digital Yacht and Patafa not so much as a guide or a resource, but an interpretation of Faulkner's fiction. In co-editing Barn Burning, what has become clear to me is that I'm actually offering a reading of this text as I'm doing this digital project. I'm doing literary criticism. Now, I'm not exactly sure what this literary criticism should be called. Maybe experiential spatial constructionism? I don't know. But I do know that as Timothy P. Caron puts it in his essay on uh, Faulkner's critical reception over the years, that uh, this is in Blackwell's companion to William Faulkner, the various critical approaches have given us a proliferation of Faulkner's. There's the Bakhtinian, the Lacanian, the Marxist, ideological, post-colonial, and so many others that, he, uh, that one expects to see that he lists. But he closes his essay arguing that Oprah's book club, Summer of Faulkner, which included online components, could, quote, through its faith in the American reading public, create yet another Faulkner, the one that no new critical methodology has yet succeeded in creating, a Faulkner who sits atop the bestseller list. Not sure if that's happened, but given the centrality of digital platforms in global economics, politics, culture, and now increasingly academia and scholarship, methodologies of digital interpretation seem to me to offer the potential of altogether new Faulkner still. The issue here actually made its way into another question the digital Faulkner panel at uh, MLA raised, which is how best to deal with or how best should we deal with these digital platforms, how should we use those? Uh, I can say that for myself, I tend to assign a text like The Sound of the Fury without really preparing the students much for it. Uh, I don't really give them any um, much uh, warning. Uh, <laughs> I don't really uh, tell them much about online resources. Uh, some of them are, I guess, uh, resourceful enough to find them. Uh, but really, I give them kind of minimal preparation, and the idea for me is uh, besides being kind of generally sadistic, uh, my idea is that they will read uh, this this text and, and experience it, and then they can go back and try to work their way through it. So I don't want to I want to give them that opportunity to feel sort of lost. For example, in the Benji section. Now, what's interesting is that Digital Yacht and Patafa at this point presents itself as a kind of guide, like other these other websites. Uh, but I found myself wondering if it might be good to add an additional, maybe, user interactive map uh, upon which users can draw their own uh, sort of mappings while also referring to the mappings that are in the, the interpretations of the editors of this website. Uh, perhaps Faulkner's own hand-drawn map uh, is, a, is an interpretation, his maps or interpretations of his own texts. I guess the thing that I, I'm getting at here is I think that Digital Yacht can be bigger than this guide. Instead, it can be something that uh, really can foreground the interpretive process and to foreground the interpretive process as being something that's, that's connected to, in very important ways, digital platforms themselves. I wish I could claim the wonderful title for this presentation for my own but I cannot. It is actually Elizabeth Cornell's.
but it's absolutely appropriate. For this entire project amounts to a Jules Verne-esque journey into a strange and unknown terrain. The kind of mapping my mind works with, conditioned as it is to construct imaginative spaces based on literary cues, uh, has to learn to negotiate really a different set of rules and Digital Humanities is all about learning those new rules. This very presentation calls upon me to design and produce uh, in ways entirely new to me. I have to say that I never thought that I as an academic would be drawing up storyboards or uh, trying to figure out how, how to uh, do editing, film editing. Uh, I have to say that in trying to put this presentation together I've been going back and forth between writing a conventional paper and producing something that looks more like a script. Also, I'm trying to figure out if this thing I'm doing is some kind of form of documentary. I feel that I'm doing something like a documentary, uh, but I don't know. What does the business, uh, what business really does the language of uh, film cutting with its quick clips and surface speed have to do with the elegant, or ideally elegant, focused uh, argument that uh, academic discourse promotes so much. Are not those two things antithetical? Um, as some of the group in Digital Yacht Patafa have wondered, how exactly should one list digital scholarship on the CV and how should institutions evaluate it for tenure? To the latter question again, I would stress that to do at least the kind of work Digital Yacht Patafa requires, one must employ interpretive skills. Just as a director must determine how to stage a play according to whatever themes and issues she wants to stress, so mapping in Digital Yacht Patafa can be seen as being guided by underlying factors. I'm not sure Digital Yacht Patafa at this point makes those factors transparent, but I do see them as analyzable within the strictures of the platform itself, which is to say the spatiality of the computer screen, of the internet, and of dynamic digital media. For me, the journey to the center of Yatna Patafa has been one to a new place in my own thinking about Faulkner and about what direction scholarship may take in the future, whether it wants to or not.